Um, so just a brief agenda. I know that we are all here for the demo part. We will do a quick Tisky overview, just who we are and what we do. Then Richard Baxter, our finance director, will do a modern finance overview. And then Tom Watson will be doing the uh, demo. Then the uh, questions will be available throughout the session. Um, you are welcome to pop them in the chat box and then um, one of the team will be able to send them across and we'll be able to answer those. So Tom, if we go to the next slide. Um, Tiski was founded in 2011. We are Microsoft Gold partner for both CRM and ERP and quite a few other things. Um, we do deliver a full end-to-end -end solution. So from uh, the initial transformation and planning straight through to, to support. Um, we are currently just over 100 employees with more than 80 of our employees in delivery roles. And the main thing that puts this gear apart from most of our co competitors is our ERP team is completely accountancy-led. So all of the team members are either accountants or have a very, very broad knowledge of, the, of accountancy. So that is Tiski in, in a nutshell. Um, so Tiski focuses only on Microsoft and the Microsoft solution. We don't offer any other product. That is because we believe in the whole Microsoft roadmap and the future proofness of the whole Microsoft suite. So if you look at this slide, you can see that that is basically a broad overview of Microsoft and the Microsoft offerings with smack in the middle. That big circle is the Microsoft Dynamics 365 modules, which offers all of the CRM modules from sales, customer service, and then to the finance, which is your business central finance and operations and HR. All of these Microsoft uh, Dynamics 365 apps into, integrate seamlessly into Microsoft 365 there on your left which includes the Microsoft Outlook, Excel, Word, all of those sort of things. And basically what it means is you can do everything that you want, um, either in Business Central or create an invoice or anything that you need straight from Excel, Word, or um, Microsoft Outlook uh, without even needing to go into the Microsoft Business Central um, module. On your right hand side to be able to help your company to look at data, um, instead of analyze, well, instead of setting up data to analyze it, you are able to look at live data on your Power BI, uh, use your Azure Internet of Things, as well as uh, the Cortana intelligence. So all of those things integrate seamlessly to make sure that you've got enough time to increase business um, efficiency and to improve and enhance your whole process. It gives you a complete 360 overview of your business to assist with your management decisions and your day-to-day -day tasks without needing to analyze data and sorting data to be able to analyze it. All of those um, modules in Microsoft Suites are on the common data platform, which means all of your data are centralized. And that means the data that you see in one application, you will see in another. So it doesn't need uh, to be refreshed or new data to be imported. All of your data is available all over. So with that brief overview of what Tiski offers and of the Microsoft Suite, I'm handing over to Richard to give you a quick overview of the modern finance. Great, thanks very much. Um, okay, so um, Tom, can you move to the next slide, please? Okay, so um, I'm just gonna do a very brief overview of what uh, we at Tiski um, understand as modern finance before Tom gets onto the actual presentation. Um, so when we set up these um, these webinars um, a few weeks ago, we wanted to specifically look at core areas that make the life of a finance individual um, better, that make the um, daily tasks less laborious, that allow you to use the data to really start actually um, gaining insight into, into what your data is telling you to help you make better business decisions and to give the finance team, you know, myself as a, as a person who's worked in finance teams for many years, um, give the finance team that, that space to use the information that they have rather than just spending all day putting data into the system and never really getting an opportunity to do anything with it. Um, so over the last few, through some last few webinars, we've been, we've been looking at, at um, areas that specifically cover things like automation of, of daily tasks, predictive analytics, machine learning, and real-time information. Today's slightly different. Today, what we're looking at is one of the core features within Business Central um, around cost accounting and the ability to really start managing and analyzing how much each of your cost centers or your profit centers are either costing you or making you. Um, and 
one of the reasons we wanted to do this is especially in today's um sort of challenges around cost being so important to people we wanted to sort of highlight it's an area in 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 business central that's not regularly used but it's actually a fantastic part of the solution and it automates a lot of that functionality around really sort of taking costs and spreading them around different profit centers so you can see the true value of each area of your business um, so it kind of sits around all of these areas. It does give you the ability to automate stuff which you may already be doing on a spreadsheet or a back of a fag packet and almost like um, sort and, and structure that kind of analysis of your costs. Um, it also does lean obviously on the real time information. You know, a lot of this is, is directly and I won't go into too much detail because Tom will go through that. But it really gives you the opportunity to take the data that you have to really start drilling in and allow you to predict and allow you to see the true cost or profit that you're making in different areas of your business to make those business decisions that are going to be vital to all of us over the uh, over the coming months and years. Um, if we just move on to the next slide, I think I've probably covered most of it already. Yeah, absolutely. So, so accuracy, obviously paramount, the advantage of not using spreadsheets, the advantage of using the core data inside your finance application to do these labor intensive tasks, saving you time, and giving you the kind of reports that you need and knowing that it's consistent with um, the rest of the data because you're using the same information. Um, so without um, going on any further, I'll hand over to Tom, who's actually going to give you an overview of how cost accounting works in Business Central. Thank you very much, Rich. No problem. Okay, cool. So cost accounting within Business Central is a separate area from the uh, general ledger. Uh, however, it can be aligned with the chart of accounts and dimensions you have set up already. So cost types would map to a chart of accounts, cost centres would map to a department um, dimension and cost objects would map to a product or service uh, dimension that you would have. Uh, when you um, create entries within cost accounting, they are called cost entries and they can be allocated further. So you can see the true cost of things so that, um, where you would post something to say an administration center in your chart of accounts, you want to actually see the true cost and you can split that between, for example, sales and support and admin. And you can also then um, check that towards cost budgets as well. So you can have cost budgets, which are also set up separately to your um, GL budgets. So as I just mentioned, uh, cost journals that can be posted to uh, cost types and you create cost type entries. They can be assigned to a cost center or a cost object. So cost center being a department, the cost object being a, a product or service. And they're completely separate from the GL accounts. And all postings with the cost accounting area can be deleted. So it, as I said, it's a completely separate area. Uh, we can also do uh, cost allocations. So you can allocate costs based on GL entries, uh, cost type entries, number of employees, items sold or purchased, or budget entries. But then we can also use the cost type entries to mimic other measures such as uh, floor space and worked uh, hours worked. So I will go straight into a demo now about that. So I'll just close that off and share this. So uh, cost accounting can be found in the cost accounting area at the top here. And going into cost types, this is where you'd be setting up your uh, chart of accounts. So I've got uh, three already set up for now. Um, I'll use the example of office uh, for square meters. So uh, if I just have a look in here, I've already posted some entries and we can imagine that this is floor space. So we can say we've got 10,000 meters squared for admin, 25 for sales and uh, 1500 for support. And this is just posted using the cost entries. Um, but to uh, to get started on um, bringing cost types in, we can get to process and get cost types from chart of accounts. And when we do that, it brings in your uh, chart of accounts on your income statement, um, and then it brings those through for you. Uh, we can then run a job, which is transfer GL to um, entries to cost accounting. If we do that, you can start seeing that some figures populated with a balance to allocates uh, on the uh, right hand side. And if I actually go to our cost accounts using this um, this filter set up, so uh, it's going to show the same figures here. So we've got uh, the income there. We've got some figures for rent and salaries, and that matches what's come through on the cost types. So as I, as I said, I'll, I'll put a date filter there for the first of um, January and the reason why it's pulled that through for here is based on the cost accounting setup. So there's a little bit of setup you can do for the cost accounting. Uh, just put a start date for your GL transfer. You say whether you want to align certain things such as the GL, the cost center dimension and the cost object dimension. You've got the options of 
no alignment, automatic alignment and prompt to align. And there's also a good feature here of auto transfer from GL, which essentially means every time you do a post into your GL, it will automatically post the cost entry in the, in the background as well to ensure that your cost accounting area is uh, completely up to date as postings hit the GL. So if you go through further areas of the cost accounting, we've got the cost centers. So these have currently been pulled through from the uh, department dimension. And as I pulled them through the uh, from the transfer to the cost accounting, we've got net change figures. So those have been summed up automatically for us. Uh, cost objects, I'm not going to uh, be using those for the purpose of the demo, but as I said, they'll, they'll be where you've got services or products and you can put these through as cost objects. And then once you've allocated certain areas of the cost center, you can then further allocate to cost objects. We've also got cost budgets. So these are, I've just done a, a really quick budget here for, for rent and utilities, and that's separate from my GL account. And then we've got cost allocations. So as Rich mentioned, um, you may do a posting to, for example, for rent, and you post that to the, the admin center. But when you want to allocate, the, uh, understand the costs of, uh, associated with each um, cost center that you have or profit center, you want to do a, an allocation. So for example, rent, we, we do that based on floor space. And as I showed you earlier, we had the shares of 10,000, 25,000, 1,500. So in the background, the system can allocate those shares and percentages to allow you to post to the um, cost centers based on your cost allocation as you, as you would need to post. So if we look back at the uh, cost cost types, we have a uh, rent expense and we've got uh, £3,630 uh, to allocate there. So I run the job, we can allocate the costs. And it's just a job. So we've got options for allocation levels. So um, uh, we've got allocation options of, you can set levels one to 99, and the ones I've set up, they're both set at level one, but you can run this so you can set for, run for 10 levels at once, then the next 10, then the next 10, so you, you distribute in your allocations as you, as you need to. So I'll just run that. Start the job, it's, it's creating the eight allocation entries. And as you can see now, my balance file allocates uh, been removed. And based on what I set up in the background for the, for the rent and rates, we now have an allocation of rent and utilities. If I just click in here, we then based on what I set up, we've got uh, an allocation of 10,000 of 3,650 shares, and it's, it's posted the allocation based on what was in the in the in the GL amount. So this can then be reported on, as you'd expect. So we've got uh, some out of the box reports for cost accounting, PL, uh, cost accounting, PL statement, and then by period, and we've also got some analysis. But to bring it back to some of the demos we've uh, looked at previously, uh, we can also do this in account schedules. So we'll be popping the account schedule demo link in the description, but we can also uh, report on the account schedules here. So uh, there's one a very small one I've created with just one line. So based on what I've uh, distributed, I've got a one line uh, account schedule. And if I click process and overview, we, we see my net change and we can add some filters here based on cost um, dimensions. So previously we've looked at it being based on the uh, GL, but we can also do that based on the costs. So if we do that and I can bring my budget in, you then see we've got the net change based on the uh, administration cost center and the budget that I had set up. So um, that allows you to um, see the true cost of the allocations for, for each cost center. So just as a quick overview, the uh, cost accounting area, you can auto post entries posted to the GL to the cost accounting. It's optional and entries can be sent in daily or monthly batches. Um, allocations can be posted between cost types or cost objects and moving costs to production or services. Uh, cost budgets can be created which differ from the GL budgets and you can create a um, account schedule to report on those costs. Uh, one thing you can't do is you can't push back towards the GL so you, you cost journals are where they are and uh, they're, they're saying the um, cost accounting area.